Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Money Girl, a podcast that helps you master your money so you can live rich and love the journey. I'm Laura Adams, a personal finance expert and award-winning author based in Austin, Texas. You guys really send in some terrific questions. I can't answer every one, unfortunately, but I promise that I do read every one. And when I see trends or get a question that I think can help a lot of people, I bring it to you here on the show. And that's the case with today's topic, which comes from a question that Lanika sent. She says, three years ago, I quit my job and used my 401k money to survive. Now I have a great job with a 401k, but my company doesn't match my contributions. What options do I have? Lenika, thanks for sending that in. So we'll talk about investing for retirement and what to do when you have a 401k available at work or maybe a 403b, which is very similar, but you're disappointed because it doesn't come with any matching funds. And I'll also briefly explain what employer matching is and how it works if you're not familiar with it. I've written and podcasted a lot about retirement accounts, so I'm going to mention a few previous shows that I think will help you along the lines of retirement accounts and how to invest for retirement. You'll find a transcript for this show with all the links that I'm going to mention, plus more resources on the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. Just look for episode number 460 called, Should You Invest in a 401k with No Matching? And that's also where you can find the full archive of shows that predate what's available in iTunes or some of the other podcast aggregators where you may see only the most recent 24 or 25 episodes. Having the opportunity to invest in a 401k retirement plan is a really valuable benefit, and it's only offered by employers. However, companies are not required to match employees' retirement contributions, so many don't. If that's the case with your plan, you may be wondering if it still makes sense to invest in a 401k with no matching. So first, I'll explain how 401k matching works and helps to boost your account value. Basically, guys, it's free money, and it does come with certain rules that may vary from company to company. In some cases, you get matching funds at work even if you don't invest in your 401k. For instance, your employer might contribute 3% of your salary each year, no matter if you contribute to the plan or not. But most 401ks require you to meet a specific savings goal before the matching funds kick in. It's like the way they incentivize you to put in your own money. A popular benefit is to match 50% up to 6% of your pay. Here's an example. Let's say you make $100,000 and contribute 6% or $6,000. If you do that, your company would match 50% or $3,000. That would give you a total of $9,000 in total contributions. You'd put in six, the company would put in three. Contributing at least 6% of your salary in this example maximizes the amount your company is willing to match. Now, if you contribute less than 6% of your income, you're going to miss out on some potential compensation on those free matching funds. For instance, if you make $100,000 and contribute 4% or $4,000, your match would only be 50% of that or $2,000, leaving $1,000 of potential matching money on the table. Other matching terms that you might see are to match 100% of what you contribute up to 3% of your income. Or a really generous match would be 100% of your contributions up to 6% of your pay. So it's going to vary depending on the plan that you have with your company. Not meeting the savings goal means you're missing out on a lot of free money going into your retirement account. And that's really a big incentive to contribute at least enough to max out your plan's match. But you don't always own matching funds right away because they can be tied to a vesting schedule. For instance, you might have to be employed for three years until you own them, or you might receive 20% of them each year over a five-year period. However, no matter how long you stay with your employer, you're always 100% vested in the contributions that you make to a workplace retirement account. So the money that comes out of your paycheck into the plan is always yours, even if you leave the company right away. 
So while matching is a major advantage that some workers get, it's not the only upside to investing in a 401k. So we're going to cover seven 401k benefits besides matching that I don't want you to overlook. The first benefit is paying less income tax. I mean, this is why these plans were created in the first place. When you put money in a traditional 401k, you reduce your annual taxable income, and that cuts the amount of tax you have to pay. You defer paying income tax on both your contributions and their earnings in the account until you take withdrawals in the future. For example, If you earn $40,000 and contribute 10% or $4,000 to a traditional 401k, you only have to pay tax on $36,000 of income, not on $40,000. So when you receive your Form W-2 at the end of the year, you'll see that your wages subject to income taxes are reduced because of your 401k contributions. However, you'd still pay Social Security and Medicare taxes on your full income of 40,000. Likewise, you'd also avoid state income tax, but may have to pay into funds for state unemployment or disability insurance, depending on where you live. And there's another option that's gaining popularity called a Roth 401k. With a Roth, you pay tax on contributions up front, but then never pay a penny of tax on the future withdrawals of contributions or your investment earnings. This is similar to how taxes work with a Roth IRA. However, unlike a Roth IRA, with a Roth 401k, there's no annual income limit. High earners are never shut out from being eligible to contribute to a Roth 401k the way they are shut out with a Roth IRA. And by the way, if you'd like more clarification on the differences between the retirement accounts that I'm talking about in this show, I created a free one-page PDF download that shows you all the rules. It's called the Retirement Account Comparison Chart, and you'll find it in the notes for this show on the Money Girl page at quickanddirtytips.com, or you can text me and get it. You can just text the word RETIRE, R-E-T-I-R-E, RETIRE, send that to the number 33444, and I will send you the Retirement Account Comparison Chart PDF. Okay, the second benefit of a 401k is making automatic payroll contributions. This is another major benefit of using a 401k, and the reason it's kind of unique is that regular contributions must come from payroll deductions. And while this might seem like an administrative feature, it's actually a behavioral benefit. Having regular deductions from your paycheck invested without you having to think about the process or do anything allows your account to grow on autopilot. And this is important because by paying your 401k first, right off the top, you don't even have the chance to spend those contributions. Of course, you can log on to your online account and increase or decrease your contribution amount or suspend it altogether if needed. But once you elect a percentage of your gross income or even a flat amount to contribute from each paycheck, you'll be investing automatically every payday. Benefit number three, getting federal legal protection. A lesser known benefit of investing in a 401k is that your money gets federal legal protection from creditors through the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974, and that's called ERISA for short. It sets minimum standards for employers that choose to set up retirement plans and for the administrators who run those plans. Let's say you have money in an ERISA qualified account, but you lose your job and you can't pay your mortgage. If the lender gets a judgment against you, they can attempt to collect debt from you in a variety of ways, but not by getting into your 401k. Other types of retirement accounts, such as an IRA, are more vulnerable to creditors. Protections for non-ERISA accounts vary depending on the type of account you have, how much you have in it, and the state where you live. However, note that there are exceptions when 401k money is at risk, such as when you owe the IRS for federal tax debts, you owe criminal penalties, or owe an ex-spouse under a Qualified Domestic Relations Order, or QDRO. Benefit number four, having a high annual contribution limit. 
For 2016, the annual allowable 401k contribution limit is $18,000 or $24,000 if you're over age 50. This is much higher than the limit for either a traditional or a Roth IRA, which is $5,500 or $65 if you're over 50. Now, while $18,000 might seem like a lofty goal if you're young or just starting out in your career, make a commitment to contribute no less than 10 to 15% of your gross income for retirement. And by the way, these limits only apply to contributions you make. You can actually exceed them by getting additional matching contributions from your employer, which is one of the reasons matching is so great when it's available to you. Setting up a percentage contribution allows you to add more to your 401k every time your pay goes up. So maybe it's a cost of living raise, a promotion, or a bonus. Your 401k deduction will be calculated on your paycheck's gross amount. Most workplace retirement plans also have a feature that allows you to automatically increase your contribution percentage every year. Consider setting this up so you boost your savings at least 1% every year until you reach 15%. That's an easy way to set yourself up for a secure retirement. And you know what? You probably won't even miss the money as your savings ramps up year after year. Benefit number five having access to free financial advice. After you enroll in any type of retirement plan, you have to choose how to invest your contributions from a menu of options. Most 401k plan providers are major brokerages like Fidelity, Vanguard, and Merrill Lynch. They typically offer top-notch resources, such as an online assessment or free consultations with a financial advisor to help you pick the best diversified investments for your situation. In general, the more time you have until retirement or the higher your risk tolerance, the more stock funds you should own as a percentage of your overall portfolio. They may be labeled as growth funds or aggressive growth funds because they give potentially higher returns, but also come with higher risk due to market volatility. Now, when you have less time or a low risk tolerance, you should own fewer stocks and a higher percentage of bond funds or money market funds. You may see these called income funds because they offer stable but lower returns on your investment. So take advantage of the opportunity to get customized advice and ask questions about the menu of available investment choices. To learn more about how to pick the best portfolio, I'd recommend that you go back and listen to episode number 399. It's called how to invest money in your IRA or 401k retirement account. Benefit number six, having the option to take out a loan. Some workplace plans include the option to borrow from your own account, but you're typically limited to take out no more than 50% of your vested balance up to a maximum of $50,000. So let's say you have $20,000 that's vested in your 401k you could only borrow a maximum of $10,000 or 50%. If you follow all the rules for taking a 401k loan, it's penalty-free, but not interest-free. You must pay interest at a rate specified in your plan document, which gets added to your account balance. So the loan plus interest must generally be repaid within five years. While it's never a good idea to raid your retirement funds, Taking a loan from a workplace plan can be a better alternative than taking a hardship withdrawal, which comes with a 10% penalty if you're younger than age 59 and a half. Taking a loan from your retirement plan leaves you with less money for the future, and it can also put you in a really tight spot if you leave your employer or you get fired before the loan is fully repaid. The major risk of taking a 401k loan is that if you lose your job while repaying it, the entire outstanding balance is due right away, usually within 60 to 90 days. And if you can't pay it back that quickly, the balance is considered an early withdrawal subject to income tax plus a 10% penalty. Not good. Okay, the last benefit, number seven, is taking it when you leave. When I first started working, I was actually hesitant to invest in a retirement plan sponsored by my employer 
I didn't realize how easy it is to transfer funds out of a 401k and into another one at a new job or into an IRA that you manage on your own. The portability of a 401k allows you to simply move your retirement savings with no penalty, no matter how often you change jobs. And if you want to learn more about this, I recommend listening to episode 362 called Where to Roll Over Your 401k Retirement Money. Maybe you've got an old 401k that you need to do something with, so I'd recommend that you listen to this show to find out what to do with it. These seven benefits tip the scales in favor of maxing out a 401k before contributing to any other type of retirement account, like an IRA or funding a regular taxable brokerage account. Even when there's no matching, the benefits of a 401k simply can't be beat. So my advice for Lanika is to make maxing out her 401k and not tapping into it again a top retirement priority. And if she doesn't have an emergency fund, building up some cash reserves equal to at least three to six months worth of your living expenses is a fundamental financial priority. Your emergency fund should generally never be invested, but kept completely safe in an FDIC-insured bank account. To learn more about this, you'll want to listen to episode number 401 called Should You Invest Emergency Funds or Keep Cash? And when you don't have a 401k at work, the next best option is to max out an IRA. And if you're self-employed, you can use a combination of accounts, such as a solo 401k and an IRA for even more tax savings. To learn more about this, if you're self-employed, check out episode number 422 called Five Retirement Options When You're Self-Employed. And also be sure to see episode number 441 called 401k or IRA, which one should you invest in first? Once you max out every tax advantage retirement account that's available for your situation and you still have more money to invest, then it's time to fund a regular taxable brokerage account. Until then, don't take the benefits of workplace retirement accounts for granted. From time to time, I hear from people who enjoy the show but aren't subscribed. What's going on, guys? Subscribing is free on many apps of your choice, like iTunes or Stitcher. If you're on Android, try out Podcast Addict or Beyond Pod. And make sure you never miss a weekly episode by being subscribed. And Money Girl is also on the Spotify mobile app. To keep the money conversation going with a really terrific community, Join my private Facebook group called Dominate Your Dollars. To request your invitation, visit Dominate Your Dollars on Facebook or send me a text message for immediate access. Just text the word dollars, it's D-O-L-L-A-R-S, to the number 33444. I hope to see you in the group. And you can also visit my site at lauradadams.com to send me a direct email with your money question or to learn more about me or check out the resources I recommend on my tools page to help you accomplish more with your money by increasing your earnings, savings, and productivity. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week, courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. 